What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Theros Beyond Death Best of One Ranked Draft here on our YouTube channel. My name is Ethan, also known as Lord Tupperware. Before we get into the draft, I just want to remind folks, the best way to help grow the channel, please, please, please consider clicking that subscribe button, clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment in the comment section. All of that helps us out greatly, lets us know you like what we're doing here. This is just after the uh, reset of the ranking here for uh, Arena, so we're in gold. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can uh, crush some fools here as we jump into the draft with some gems and see what our pack one pick one has to offer. What the heck? No black cards? Wow. Brutal. Um, so here we see the best common in the pack as Dreadful Apathy. Um, some really good uncommons in Anax, Illyrios, and Reverent Hoplite. Um, and a fine, fine rare in a, a dual land, but not what we're going to be considering here. I'd say it's these, these top four cards here. I believe I have Apathy ahead of Hoplite in terms of uh, white cards. And then the question is, do I want Anax or Illyrios, which I do have as the uh, number one blue uncommon and the number one red uncommon. Do I want either of those over the apathy? And I think I'm going to stick with the removal here. Apathy is just so, so strong. Um, but I, I wouldn't fault anyone, I think, for taking any of these cards. And honestly, if you wanted to take Hoplite over the apathy, that would be A-OK -okay with me as well. Well, fairly straightforward follow-up to our white removal that is an enchantment to a favorite of Iroas. This is a card that I have liked quite a bit. I'll take that over the uh, the other white commons here. Um, beyond that, what do we got? Uh, Omen of the Sea, Impending Doom, some, some all, all medium cards, but uh, favorite of Iroas is going to go ahead and get on in here. Nothing really that sways me from white. I mean, obviously this is very early to take Sentinel's Eyes. But what else am I taking here? I mean, Dream Shaper Shaman is a card that I like, but it's not a card that I like in red-white. Now, obviously, we could get pushed off of these cards for sure. Ichthyomorphosis is a card that I think is fine, and also probably fine in blue-white, but is it a pull into blue for me when there's a card like Sentinel's Eyes or Blessing that I would like to have my first copy of? I don't think so. So while I think this is a pretty weak pack, I'm just going to grab Sentinel's Eyes and move on with my life. All right, well, now we do have to make a decision as there are no white cards here for us to grab. And the decision is pretty disappointing. None, none of these cards are going to really, like, push me into a second color strongly. I'm obviously going to take a card of a second color, but uh, nothing's going to make me stick to that. And I'm, I'm looking at Underworld Ragehound and Scophos Maze Warden as uh, top of the heap. And uh, when in doubt, I'm going to go ahead and take the cheaper card here. I think the two drop is going to be more important than the four drop if we are in red white. And, you know, getting escape cards in red white is also kind of rare. So Rage Hound number one is going to be my choice. Okay. Um, pretty happy to be base white and get a Daybreak Chimera. This is a card that this is exactly when I want to be taking a card like this rather than taking Chimera as like a signal into white or like a reason to be white. I like it as a payoff for being white. And if it weren't here, I'd be happy to take Dreamstalker Manticore instead to stick with the red that we have. So that's where I'm going to be at here. No no real tough decisions as we get a Heliod's Pilgrim uh, sixth pick here, and that's going to be great as we already have Apathy and Sentinel's Eyes to pick up. Um, I don't know how the bots value Impending Doom, so uh, that's maybe we see one on the wheel because we've seen a couple so far, and that's a card if we are in red-white that I like, especially with Heliod's Pilgrim. Um uh, important to note, I think, that we've seen, like, basically no good black cards, so maybe we've got some bots that are snapping those black cards up quickly. Uh, pretty unexciting pack. Flicker of Fate is, I think, at its worst in red-white, but we are by no means in red-white at the moment. So I'm going to take it and put it in the sideboard, but this is a card that I like when I have, you know, more controlling versions of white, or I've got some sagas, or, you know, other things. It's not really that hard to get a, a full card's worth of value out of uh, out of Flicker of Fate. Feels like a bit of a throwaway here. You know, our white is fairly aggressive, so I'm looking at cards that I like, like Nexus Wardens or Riptide Turtle, which are more on the defensive side. I might just take a Trickster here. It's really hard to imagine that we end up in a draft where we're red-white and we want to play Trickster. So maybe I'd just take a Nyxborn Marauder as a hedge. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hedge as, like, maybe black is open in pack two and we, we move into that. Um, well, speaking of black being open, I do think Lamp Out of Death's Vigil is sometimes at its best in black-white, especially when you have pious wayfarers. Like, 
If black white, if you have an aggro version of black white, lamp out of death's vigil can trigger your wayfarers or, or your favorite of Iroas, and then is like a lava axe for you down the road once you've got your opponent down to six or whatever and they've stabilized. So I'm gonna take that. Amulet, not a card that I really care much about here. Yes, yeah, so we've got a couple escape cards, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be that important in a white base deck. And we do get impending doom on the wheel, so I'm happy about that. I'll take that here. Get an aspect and a second flicker, I'll take an aspect. Uh, Aspect is a card, you know, you can think about it with Heliad's Pilgrim, but it's really, it gets a lot worse when you, uh, you know, sort of show it to your opponent. When you, Once you reveal this card, the power of it goes down. We'll just grab a, you know, random Plummet, random Soul Reaper for if we're black-white, and a last pick, Altar. Okay, pretty, pretty decent spot here for us. And we open a red rare, but it's Underworld Breach. Um, we do have... Two pretty good options here between Daxos Blessed by the Sun and Iroas's Blessing. Um, Daxos being quite good because we know we're going to be white at this point, and I think we're, we're fairly likely to be red, but by no means, you know, I, I could definitely see getting past a couple black cards and then going, all right, well, I'd, I'd like to play Lampad and Soul Reaper, and then we can shift into a different style of deck. So that's going to be my consideration here for taking Daxos over Iroas's Blessing. I think if I knew I was red white. I would take Iroas' Blessing here. Daxos enables like the turn three Chimera as well. I think they're, you know, it's going to trigger our favored. If this is, even if we end up in red white, this is still going to be a good card. It's going to be like slightly less good than Iroas' Blessing, I think. Um, but I'm not even sure that's true, you know, against some, in some matchups, if we're trying to race, this card just makes it impossible for our opponents to race. Uh, here, hmm, interesting. We have three red cards that I don't like in red-white. Um, Thrill is fine, but you really want to be affecting the board. And then our only white card is a Nyxborn Courser, which I really don't like in, in red-white at all. Like, I just don't want two power for three mana. I find that oftentimes my red-white decks are split, though I guess with Daxos and Chimera, we're probably not going to be split evenly uh, with, with white. You know, we'll probably lean more like 10-7, 10-6, depending on what our mana ends up looking like. So this is going to be a castable card for sure, but not something that I want to take second. I, I'm going to waffle and hedge a little bit here and take Timurit. Now, a card like Timurit, is going to be hard to cast for us, but it doesn't need to come down on turn two and can just hose some decks. And again, opens us up to being able to play black white here. So I'm going to take Timurit. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And this is exactly the situation I'm talking about. I mean, seeing a card like Elspeth's Nightmare, we now have the, in my opinion, the second and third best black on commons, and you know, some of the strongest black cards you can get at non rare. Um, there's there's still a, a Heliod's Pilgrim and an Omen of the Sun and a Mogus's Favor. One of those could wheel for us, but I'm going to take Elspeth's Nightmare here and uh, and try and capitalize on black being open from the left as it continues to flow with a Blight Breath Catablipus. Um, Hero of the Nyxborn as well. It would have been nice if we had stuck with red or uh, or had sort of towed the line a little bit more, but but Timurid into Elspeth's Nightmare I think is really going to gonna push me over the top here with this BBC. We get BBC number two versus Pilgrim number two. Now, Blight Breath Catablipus, as we as we hedge towards more heavy black, I think this is going to be better for us. Um, now that we've got, you know, a Timoret, a couple other permanents, a, a second Catablipus. This is going to be an awkward mana base. This is a deck definitely where Amulet's going to be good just to sort of, you know, help out our 9-8 life or, or maybe, you know, 9-9 or 8-8, I guess, if we're going to take advantage of the hand smoother. Um, it's close. You know, Pilgrim finds just Apathy and Sentinel's Eyes, and Sentinel's Eyes is really not even a card that I find to be great. In the deck that we have right now, you know, I don't know if we're going to be, uh, like, more controlling or more aggressive. Black-White can sort of do both, but I think BBC number two is going to be nice for us. Now we've got uh, choices between Envoy, which, you know, we haven't seen a single Pious Wayfarer. Maybe the bots have correctly adjusted to that card being uh, almost great in every deck. Uh, but I, I like this a lot better when I've got either Wayfarers or, you know, a Commanding Presence or Iroas' Blessings or uh, Heroic Triggers to make this a 2-2 flyer consistently. But in, in our deck currently, this isn't that exciting. So looking at Funeral Rites versus Scavenging Harpy. And I think I want the threat in the air in Harpy over the card draw in Rites. You know, we've got some sources of card advantage in... Soul Reaper in Pilgrim, 
in uh, you know, Blight Breath being a two for one. So Elspeth's Nightmare can be a two for one. So I'm not super worried about that. And I think I just want the threat here. <laughs> and as, as soon as I, I mention Commanding Presence with the Envoy, here it comes. Um, and we also got Rise to Glory. Now Rise, I really want to make sure I've got like three of the you know, Myers Grasps or Dreadful Apathy type effects, even a Commanding Presence type effect that I, I want to get back. Now, we've only got the one so far, so I'm going to pass up on Rise and take Commanding Presence here and be pretty happy, actually, that we snapped up that flyer in the Harpy because I think Commanding Presence goes on flyers quite nicely. This Pivot into Black is looking real dece. Uh, we've got Piper, Favor, and Omen, all three cards that I would like to have in the deck. Omen is going to be... Top of the heap here for me, especially with double Blight Breath, not only being able to get those back, but adding Devotion as well once we've gotten something back. So Omen's going to be the pickup for me here. Laying into the Lost Pride, probably just making its way to the sideboard at the moment, as I don't particularly see this deck being hyper-aggressive. Thaumaturge is familiar, could make the deck with a card-like Presence. Now, unfortunately, this was the pack where I was hoping for something a little better than Berserker, though Berserker is playable in this deck for sure. Second copy of Eyes to the sideboard. Not even sure I want to play the first. Now, Wings of Hubris is actually a card that I'm considering playing in the deck and was something I had in the back of my mind. As I look through this deck, I see a lot of powerful effects. You know, we've got good removal. We've got a couple evasive threats. But at a certain point, I wonder, how do I win a game of Magic? And Wings of Hubris feels like a card that could help out quite nicely there. Now, we open a pack with one black card in Aspect of Lamprey. So that's not going to make the cut. And we've got Hero of the Pride and Karametra's Blessing. Uh, I think we'll take Hero, even though we don't really have ways to target it. Um, Commanding Presence being the only thing. You know, it's a two-drop. It's fine. We might get more stuff. I'm, I'm still on the fence about this Sentinel's Eyes at the moment, but pretty locked in to, uh, to white-black here. Now, if the bots are going to behave themselves, we can probably assume we will see little to no black in pack three. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Pretty big swing and a miss here with the Hero of the Pride, so we'll just move on with our lives and, and be happy now with a second pick, Dreadful Apathy. Um, number of other cards that, you know, we could play. We could play a Triumphant Surge. Definitely would play a, a Hierophant, though we don't really have any escape yet to take advantage of it. Second Lamp Hat I don't much care for. Funeral Rites I would be medium okay with here, but pretty straightforward Apathy for my money. Ooh, now we're talking. Now we're talking here, folks. We've got a Lagana Band Storyteller. So we've got some loop-de-loops here with Omen of the Dead for sure. Um, this is going to slot in quite nicely, and I'm now reminded, seeing the card in here, that we have Flicker of Fate, and I think Flicker of Fate, we've got two Apathies now, we've got two Blight Breath Catablepus, we've now got a Storyteller that we can blink. We've got some goods here with the Flicker of Fate, so I'm, I'm bringing in Storyteller and pretty happy with that prospect. Probably cutting Sentinel's Eyes at the moment. Just want to just quickly glance through and see if there's anything else that feels like it's on the chopping block for me at the moment. And I'd say no, and Berserker is a little awkward. Here we're going to take another Chimera, and I think, again, this, this mana base is going to be a tough split. We're going to be... I, I would hope to maybe get an Amulet so I could go 8-8 eight, eight Amulet. Um, we've got an Altar in the board, which honestly isn't crazy, as it's going to add Devotion for both Chimeras, Catablepuses, Daxos, and Timurit, so... I could see running a, an altar in, in this style of deck. Uh, nothing exciting or interesting here for us. I mean, there are black and white cards, but none that I really want to play. Um, probably best of the bunch for us is like Rumbling Sentry or Captivating Unicorn. I, I don't think we're playing either of those cards, though, so it doesn't really matter. Another favorite of Iroas and a Revoke Existence. Now, we don't have this kind of effect. It is best of one, and I generally don't like maining these effects. So our deck is looking a little bit more um, grindy and not like out of the gate aggressive, you know, like I think we can win, we can win an early game, but I think we can also like pr really take advantage of winning a long game as well. So I I'm at where I think I normally would be unfavored at number two. I think I'm going to shore up a hole and, and make a little concession to this being best of one and grab a revoke existence here over the threat just so I have this effect. Wow. Daxos number two versus Sunmane Pegasus is a pretty big um, consideration here. I think it's just Daxos number two. This card is amazing to me. We've got the two Chimera, like two Daxos, two Chimera really lends us to, hey, could we get the, the Daxos into Chimera turn, turn two, turn three life? And I think we have 
enough life gain as well with, you know, with now it'll be double Daxos, we'll have Lampad, we'll have Timoret. I'm um, trying to think what else gains life for us, if anything. Um, nothing else, but I think that's going to be good enough to where I, I want to take that over the Pegasus. Um, uh, Farika's Libation, Unicorn, Land in. I don't think any of these cards are making the cut, but I, I'll put Libation. That's, the, that's a card that we don't have access to just yet. And we'll run through these picks pretty quickly. Like I said, I don't think I'm running a second land pad. I don't think I'm playing Aspect either, but I'll, uh, I'll just take it here. Flicker of Fate number two I don't think is going to make the cut. Fruit of Tizaris. Yeah, so pretty happy with this deck. You know, we don't didn't end up with like a final death or Myers Grasps. Um, I don't even know if we have... Do we have any rares? No, we're, we, are, we are rare free in this deck right now. So that's that's pretty interesting. But I think it's a powerful deck. 9-8 um, here, I think, is going to be our split. It does make the Daxoses and the Timurits of the world. It, it, there's there's also, I think, a thought to going 10-7 and just saying, look, Timurit's really like a 4-drop. And I think we could be okay with that. That makes our Daxos into Chimera plan a little better. I think that's going to be the one swap that I make here. So we'll go up 10-7 here. And, uh, and just consider Timoret to be more of a late game play. Some of our weaker cards, I'd say maybe Harpy and, and Rage Scarred Berserker, but I don't see better options for them in the sideboard. Uh, again, I don't feel like we're on an aggressive plan, though beyond, we don't have anything else that has escape other than Sentinel's Eyes. So perhaps that's, we should just have a nod to let's play Sentinel's Eyes because we have very we don't have another way to use the graveyard and in that sense what should we cut for it perhaps hero of the pride i mean it's basically just a two mana two two we could we can now slap an eyes on it eyes also gives pilgrim another thing to find though i can't imagine pilgrim finding anything other than double apathy or commanding presence um i mean i really do want to make room for the sentinel's eyes because we don't have any other escape stuff I mean, it's good on good for our flyers. Make make our flyers vigilant threats. Like a four four vigilant chimera is pretty dang good. Um, maybe that means we don't need wings. You know, we've got flyers, right? Two chimeras and a harpy. We've got some beef. Maybe maybe we can maybe we can say, hey, we don't let's swap eyes for for uh, for wings, and we'll see how that plays out. All right, this is gonna be the deck, and we'll see you for the first game. All right, here we are for game number one with our black-white deck. Um, playing against Big McHuge. Love that screen name. Um, opponent goes first. This hand is really tough. I think this is a mulligan. It's got potential. Like, I see Flicker with Storyteller and Catablepus, but we're doing nothing here. And if we just draw lands and we're on the draw, we, we, we're going to stumble pretty hard against a number of decks. So we're going to ship this and this will be a keep and we'll, we'll get rid of uh, one blight breath. We've got now a, a removal E hand playing against blue with an Eidolon of philosophy. That's my new philosophy. Um, really timely, not even pop culture reference there. All right. So we're going to crack, get cracked in here for one with the Eidolon. And we'll see if our opponent, it looks like they definitely have something. Um, Starlet Mantle, maybe. So we'll see if they tap out this turn. And they do for an Entrancing Liar. Happy we have the Revoke in our main deck. So we're going to take the opportunity to get Elspeth's Nightmare down while they're tapped out. Take out the Eidolon for sure. And then uh, hopefully get, get a clean two for one by snagging something out of their hand. I'll see it of Life's Bounty. And no follow-up here for the opponent beyond that. And we'll see what's going on upstairs. And the world is our oyster here with Dreadful Apathy, Caramedra's Blessing, and Ichthyomorphosis, and Memory Drain. So let's think about what's going to happen here. We're going to play Favorite of Iroas. They'll use a removal spell on it or tap it down, I guess, with uh, just the Entrancing Liar. Um, well, it's going to be hard for us to fight through this much removal, I would say. The question is, like, it feels like Apathy is the best of the bunch, and we should just take it, though we do have, like, Flicker we could draw. Memory Drain is something that's nice to know about. Like, this is eventually going to do some good work here, so there's also something to think about with that, but I feel like we, we can probably 
set up a turn where this doesn't do a lot for them. I think I'd rather, I feel like we can strand this in their hand. I'm gonna take, or strand this in their hand for some amount of time. I'm gonna take the apathy down. Um, I'm actually gonna just play Hero of the Pride. Because it's gonna get locked down either way by the liar. Whoa, it doesn't, interesting. Okay. So opponent chose to not tap down the hero. Maybe they're thinking about it now. Maybe they're thinking about using a, an ichthyomorphosis. All right, they're gonna tap it down now. That works for me, get in with the Alcyid. Now they have Blessing to protect it. Uh, we're gonna exile their yard. Nice to get the two for one there with Nightmare. So we've unmulliganed. And we'll just play the favorite of Iroas. I guess I'd like to tap in a way where I leave up equal numbers of mana. Um, and we'll see what they do. If they uh, want to ichthyo the favored, they want to leave up memory drain. They want to leave up memory drain. Interesting. Um, well, knowing what's in their hand, this is a pretty easy... Well, I guess we could attack. And we could get out... We could bait out the blessing... I kind of like that. We can get out the blessing and then get Daxos down. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna end turn. I mean, this is sort of the the dream situation of f leaving memory drain in their hand is putting them in this spot. Yeah. So I'll Sentinel's eyes, and this is gonna get countered. Like we force them to counter our one mana spell that we can get back at some point. Yeah. That feels great, gotta say. We'll see how they scry. Two top, yeah. Uh, so play a Daxos. And get in with our Duble Striker. And end the turn. Can't cast Sentinel's Eyes just yet. Fishify the Daxos. Don't worry, we've got another one. They leave back Blessing here. Um, <laughs> do I want to let them use it? Could... Interesting, because, like, Apathy's not getting... As long as Alcyid of Life's Bounty is around, Apathy's not getting better. Um, this gives it plus two, plus two, and indestructible, right? This is tough. I don't know if I'm supposed to play Apathy or play Blight Breath. I think I'm going to Blight Breath here. Hmm. We're now roping. Let's uh, go for Apathy. I force the Blessing out of their hand. And then I can Bleeps this on the following turn. All right. Let's, let's go for... Yeah, let's go for... Apathy. which they will blessing in response, right? Hexproof indestructible, yep. Okay. And now we have Sentinel's Eyes, but we can wait until next turn to do that. So now we're good. See if opponent has found more lands. No, wow, interesting, okay. Welp. I guess let's start by bleeping. This could be another counter spell, I suppose. That would make sense. Another memory drain. Okay. That's all right with me. Hmm. 
one top, one bottom. And now we get to eyes up the favored, getting rid of, yeah, I think getting rid of uh, our two enchantments, even though we do have a storyteller in the deck, we want to keep Catablepus around. And we'll attack with a 3-3 double striker. See if they want to chump or not. This is almost certainly means that they're going to untap the liar here to retap, but oh, they don't. Okay. They don't have to maybe just yet, or maybe they the thing they found off the top is like a, an apathy or, or an ichthyo. Opponent keeping another card on top and then doing nothing is very interesting to me. I'll start off with attacking with Favored. This is a Vexing Gull. Okay. See if they double block. This is still only going to be... It's interesting, like... I could let this die. I could, I could let this trade happen, I think. Rather than flash in omen here and i almost want to do that so that both of these die because otherwise they might just sack and protect the gull but this way i actually do get a two for one yeah okay and eyes is back in the yard so we'll go ahead and cast chimera and don't really want to flash in eyes here, so I could omen. I think I might omen and crack on there to like omen back Catablepus and crack it for the scry. Idyllic tutor, wow. All right, and what have you? Just a little fishy, okay? That almost makes me want to get back favored, honestly, so that uh, I can just keep deploying threats. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, get back favored. And then crack this. Revoke for the liar, yeah, that's good. Or I could revoke Ichthyo, honestly. Hmm. If I revoke Ichthyo, I get in for five. Revoke Ichthyo, play favored. Then they have to like Ichthyo something. Then we get to eyes the Chimera. Hmm. Or I, uh, yeah, okay, let's revoke Ichthyo. <clears throat> play favored. Attack for five. And pass. Save save the eyes for a uh, constellation trigger next turn for favored. They have to double spell here. They have to removal plus play a blocker. And it still feels like we're in a very strong position. Sentinel's eyes feeling better than wings of hubris for sure in this game. Nice, head explosion, 1-0. and oh. All right, here we are for game number two with our black-white deck. This is a pretty unexciting opener, but this is going to be a keep for me. Got a Harpy on turn three. It's interesting which land we lead on. Like, we do have two Daxos versus one Timurit, so I like leading on planes, but I'll... Drop both now. Looks like a green white aggressive start for our opponent, perhaps. Envoy into into nothing. That's that's all good for me. Um, we'll play a harpy and certainly trade if the opponent offers it. All right. Looks like it wasn't nothing. Got an omen of the sun. A couple of one ones. Yeah, I I, I block. Um, if you got Indomitable Will or something, that's fine. I'm happy to soak up the damage. 
uh, envoy as a follow-up for the opponent. So we could omen back the envoy. Opponent stuck on lands this is also a relevant thing, but I think it's just better to, to play hero and uh, then that holds off the two one ones on the ground. No reason to play eyes on it, I think. They're just gonna get in for one. And a hero of their own. Oh. Does that change anything for us? That kind of changes some things for me. Like, I now have the option of Daxos and Eyes. And that'll make Hero a 4 3. And so, if they wanted to block, we'd take out their Hero and a 1 1, and we'd gain life. We could then even redeploy. No, we couldn't. We wouldn't have enough white mana to redeploy the, the eyes. Probably overthinking it. Let's just play the Berserker. And pump up on the hero. But I think not attack. We get in for three, but then, like, let's say they play Apathy. Then we're in a really bad spot. So I'm going to not attack. It's a little conservative, but I think uh, that could be a huge swing for our opponent in a way that would really mess with our game plan quite a bit. Okay, so now I'll play Daxos pre-combat. I think I will suit up the hero. And now we've got attacks with everybody. By everybody, I mean two. Wow, opponent's just going to take ten. Holy cow, that was unexpected. Um, I'm good. Go ahead. You got another omen to flash in here. Flicker of fate, your omen. Sure. If you had that, I, I might have just lined up a bunch of one ones on the rage scarred berserker. But perhaps they're setting up for a super wide attack with this hero. Might be worth just apathy and uh, exile next turn. Opponent's still just pecking away with the Envoy. Sure, we're down to 14. It's 14 all, actually, now. Uh, an opponent cannot find that next land. Okay, uh, well, never mind. I'll just do this instead. And I'm just going to kill Hero rather than, uh, than Envoy at this point. And crack in with Hero and Berserker. And they're just taking it. Opponent really taking a heart using your life total as a resource. Well, here's Flicker of Fate again. So back up to eight and two more one ones for them. Finally, land number four. And they're going to smash with everything. Well, smells like a Phalanx Tactics to me, but... Uh, Actually, well, do I? Hmm. Should, that, that's what it smells like, but I'm just, or it could just be desperation. I, I'm just going to block with everybody. I have Omen. I still have Rage Scarred Berserker. Yeah. So Tactics to pump up on our Daxos, but then they've left everything alive now. And they have green, green. Can't think of what that would be, so I'll attack and. All right, a sort of confusing game, but I'm happy for the W. On to game three. We're 2-0. and oh. All right, here we are for game number three. We're on the play. This is going to be a keeper. Obviously needs some lands, but has the potential for a nice little start with uh, potentially Catablepus at some point down the road. Looks like our opponent's deciding what they want to do with their opener. All right, they've kept, and off to the races we go. We'll lead on Daxos. Um, just snowballs more for our life gain, and you know, if, if it survives, it can attack as a 2-3 when we drop the Hero of the Pride, or whatever happens here. If we can get, get to a point where we've got Commanding Presence on Curve on the Hero of the Pride, that'll be pretty sweet. 
right? Plains number three for us. And our opponent is at least half the mirror match for us. And they have... something. Leonin of the Lost Pride. All right. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hero and pass. It's not a card I really want to apathy. No attacks. Hitting land number four on time would be really nice. It's going to be one of the things that's going to dictate how this game plays out. You know, if we're going to be able to enact our opening game plan. All right, opponent getting frisky with the lay-in and no blocks for me. One of the, I mean, obviously I don't want to trade anything off here, but also Daxos is just so good in this type of situation. Pious Wayfarer and Envoy. Okay. Land, please. And we got there. So I think we're just going to get after it here with uh, Presence on Hero. And attack with both. And this is why presence is so good. I mean, our opponent has to decide now if they want to give us a 1 1, which threatens to trade with Leon in. Andy is going to gain us a life. Or if they want to just give up a card right now. And they're going to go for giving up a card in the Wayfarer. Now, you know, this gets apathy. That's pretty bad. But we do have Flicker where we can reassign the presence onto Daxos and then get in so uh, i'm feeling like we're in a good spot there not missing that fourth land like drawing land number three and four in our first three draws was pretty crucial looks like opponent stuck on a color and interesting okay so i will serve with hero Keeping Flicker of Fate as an option. Now, they may have their own Flicker here, in which case we'll want to reassign Presence to Daxos. Opponent. Flickering Hero. So we're going to Flicker Presence. Attach Commanding Presence to Daxos. Get to gain a life in the process. Um, I don't think revoking Envoy is important here, so I'm not going to do that. And it's going to be really important. So <laughs> you can see a couple of really important, crucial things happening here. One, <laughs> Commanding Presence saving Daxos from just straight up dying to Heliod's punishment. Uh, no blocks here. But now we've saved our revoke, and we're going to get to revoke the punishment. And put our opponent in a sticky spot here where they either chump with Chimera or we get a 1-1. I imagine the, the choice is pretty clear for them here. Get a 1-1. That gains us life. Um, meanwhile, we've drawn, we've got two bleepuses in hand with, uh, no land five or six or second swamp in sight, but it's okay. You know, apathy, they may start to try and race us with flyers. Apathy may be able to take out a blocker to continue to bring the Daxos beats. We'll see what they do after they attack with the flyers. Okay. Ooh, Storyteller could get back apathy. I'm going to smash with the team here, I think. See, see what they got going on. They're just going to straight up trade with the hero. And maybe they've got another flicker. They've got Indomitable Will. Okay. To save their Lannin. Now, what do we want to do? Just play a 3-4 probably, right? I'd say so, yeah. Not now, phone. I'm recording a YouTube video. Leave me alone. OK, 
Okay, opponent continuing to try and race. Daxos making that as hard as possible. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, an Apathy, the Leonin. This will pull out like Karametra's Blessing if they have it. Omen of the Sun, good for a couple chumps and some life gain. Maybe just the one chump. If we draw another land, we can pick off Envoy first and then pick off Chimera the following turn. Opponent finally hits land number four. Hero of the Winds. Wow. All right, there we go. Well, let's uh, send in these two at least. It's a close game. Bounce there, land. Bleep is finish off the hero. Gain a life. Land number five for the opponent. Sun, main, Pegasus, and you gotta, you gotta leave some stuff back here, right? I think you gotta leave them back, yeah. So we're gonna go Bleepus pre-combat, killing, I don't think it matters. Yeah, all right. They got the message. They got bleeped. 3-0 for us. Let's go. All right, here we are for game number four, undefeated thus far. We're on the draw, our opponent's taking a mulligan. I'm gonna keep this hand. This is a bit of a yikes and keep, I'd say, but you know, we have a three drop into a four drop into, if we draw a second white source, we can cast the chimeras. Like, I think we just gotta trust our deck a little bit and uh, and keep this hand. I like keeping against mulligans too when I can. So opponent is on green. We draw a nice little three here, better than the harpy. Though no follow-ups, but could lead into a turn for Chimera. Nessie and Hornbeetle, one of the scariest uh, turn two plays I could see, specifically from Mountain Forest. So we may be in for a quick world of hurt against them. Looks like no four power creature just yet. Underworld Rage Hound, the play. Apathy's great as an answer for the Hornbeetle. So I'm going to start off by... It's interesting... I think I'm going to favored, and I'll actually trade with Ragehound, because Harpy can pick it off. I'll certainly trade with Hornbeetle if they want to attack. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't want to keep that back yet. We're going to block here. And they've got nothing, which is great, so we're going to just Harpy and exile that Ragehound. Land five, this has to be a, a large monster for the opponent. It's just a Warbriar Blessing, I, I, you know. Could definitely be worse. They get in for two. Flicker of Fate here. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to Apathy and hope we draw land and set up for the Flicker Apathy next turn. And if they don't, then we can just play Chimera because we've got a pip on board. Looks like this may be an omen. A return on the apathy. Oof. Well, now at least a uh, storyteller can get it back. Land number six. Opponent is flooded. Nice. Uh, hmm. Well, what do I want to do? I think I want a storyteller and get back Apathy, gain some life, get a blocker, and then I can still do what I want to do in a couple turns. Ferris Band Brawler is a huge problem. <laughs> um, happy that I got back Apathy here. Let's uh, one more do it again on the Horn Beetle and try and get there next turn. OK, 
Okay. Nyx Herald. Well, we can revoke that. And a Chainweb Arachnir. Okay. Wow. So choked on white mana here. So we're going to have to... Let's just do this now, I think. Full control. Boop, boop, boop. Apathy. Auto pay. Flicker. Apathy. Submit one. Auto pay. Sorry, I'm not used to doing this uh, full control nonsense on Arena. Attach Red Flapathy to Ferris Band Brawler. Submit. Now the Exile Resolve. So for folks who've never seen this cuteness before, that's the cuteness, is that you can use Apathy and uh, reassign it with Flicker of Fate after you exile the creature. Now, planes would be great for us, so we could double spell, like Daxos into Revoke, and then the Chimeras can start to gain us life. Take four here. Lampad, huh? All right, so it's got to be Lampad Revoke at this point. So I can't block this just yet. Uh, Lampad... Pass, and we have something that bounces off the Arachnir. Bluffing Karametra's Blessing like a boss. Voracious Typhon. All right, that's a problem. <laughs> Got to get some white pips on board so this Daxos can block. My turn. Another Swamp is not what you want to see. So we'll lead on Daxos. We may have to chump Sack here with uh, Lampad. I could just go to two. This is really important to hold off the Arachnir. I'll go to two. I can always sack like Lampad to itself here to gain two. Okay, my turn. That's a good draw. Um, doesn't kill anything yet. I'm not sure I even want to bring back Typhon, so I'm just going to play Chimera. Gain a life. Daxos is up to a 2-5, no attacks. Got a long way to go before we can claw our way back into this game. That that attack I don't like at all. But I don't have much of a choice, I feel like, to just block here. Yep, Gift of Strength. Okay, so set, pay one, sack Daxos. We've got another one we could find. I'm not, I'm not playing, I can't play around that card. I don't know how to play around that card, really. Um, Oh, so now we can go find another Apathy, right? Let's pull up the deck real quick. We have two Apathies, yeah? Could also find Commanding Presence. But I can't play it this turn. Um, hmm. We're gonna Pilgrim, I think we're Pilgrim and Apathy the Typhon. Question is, how, how do I win? The other option is to apathy the spider and just try and like chump the crap out of this Typhon. They can't currently get back the spider. That's something to think about. All right, I'm gonna apathy Typhon. And I'm going to attack with Chimera. No time like the present. All right. Here we go. Turn the beat around. Nylea's Forerunner. Okay. That resolves. That, that, that dies pretty easily. Pass. 
Should exile one of these, right? So attack, attack, and then I bleep the foreigner. They then can bring back the Iraq. Bring back the Iraq near is very bad. Um, I can also if I play the Catablepus, I can get him for six, and then I have five things to sack. I guess we go to combat with both chimeras, see what they do. They are going to chump. Okay. So we can go like sack, sack, put them to eight rather than, or we could, uh, or I could just block with pilgrim. So bad to give them a a fourth card in their yard at this point. It's interesting. I think I'm gonna pass and not give them that fourth card. See what they do. Then blocking with Pilgrim going to one. Oh, have they just left themselves dead? Seems that they may have. Okay, looks like yes. Three, three, two. Sack Chimera. Yeah! Woo! One is not zero, folks. One is not zero. Four zero. All right, here we go. Another pretty decent hand with our black-white no-rare deck. Game number five, not dropped a game yet. Opponent leading off of the Wayfarer, how lucky. We didn't see a single one of those. Start off with planes. Let's us open up a Daxos on two if we draw it. Black, white, the mirror. Okay, nothing from the opponent. I won't let him know about our second color just yet. RP versus Pilgrim is interesting, and what we find with Pilgrim, like, it's very tempting. I think it's tempting to get Commanding Presence because it's so powerful, but we don't have anything good to put it on. It's a few turns before we're going to be able to put it on Harpy. I think grabbing removal when we're on the draw against what's seemingly Black-White Aggro. Oh, no, there's an unknown shores. Timoret. Well, that's getting revoked for certain. I may just want to revoke that now. Okay. So we could Pilgrim. It still feels like Pilgrim Apathy, and then we can take two. And then we can revoke this the next turn. It's just it's not really more mana efficient or anything. It does it does give me, like, a turn to see if there's something better, or if they want to, like, I don't know, suit up Timurit with something. I'll take action, and I will grab Apathy. Seems like opponents stuck on mana, but I'm just, just thinking about what they want to do with their life. Totally reasonable. I think I'm snap blocking the Wayfarer if they attack with it. Pilgrim of their own for an Aspect of Lamprey. Okay, and an Amulet. Well, now we got to think about Aspect. No blocks, I'll take two. 
And it's probably just play Swamp, and we'll discard two lands if they want to suit something up here, and they probably do. Card's not getting better. I wonder if they put it on Timoret. Like, if I... Maybe I could get them to put it on... Well, no, they're not going to put it on... Once, knowing I have Apathy, they probably put it on something inconsequential. This is kind of making me want to play... I'm going to play Harpy here. Uh, we could get Timur out of there. No, this is Exiles anyway. Yeah, I'm going to play Harpy. It's, a, it's the slightly more expensive play. And I know I have to keep these lands in hand for the Aspect. This is sort of what I was talking about with, like, Aspect of uh, Manticore or even, what's it called, Indomitable Will. Like, those the, the instants, and, and this is less so that, but a Mind Rot that you know about is less effective than a Mind Rot that you don't know about. But th th those those kinds of cards that Heliod's Pilgrim finds, those are, that makes them less valuable in, in a sense. Like, you can count them as enchantments for Pilgrim, but you really hope to not reveal them. The reason I did this is if they play Aspect, we can still double block on Wayfair or Pilgrim. So then they sort of put it... Okay, that's fine. Resolves. I'm just going to play a 3-1 here. Interesting. Pass. Looks like they do... Uh, hmm. In? <laughs> I'll bite. On, uh, I guess if it's Indomitable Will. No, it can't be a Will. Because they tapped out for white. So I'm just going to go bounce and kill the Wayfarer here. Could be Blessing, I guess. Nice to not have to worry about Blessing. And nice to not have to worry about the Wayfarer. Still have Pilgrim to trade off with the Lannan. We could even Omen back harpy right now which honestly i think i'm gonna do oh sh well that was a punt okay forgot about timoret so just uh just rocking the old one mana or two black black scry over multiple turns, so that's not ideal. Not what you want to see. I think we can recover, though, but we can get that punt count out there. All right, Aspect up the 3-1. This is what we've been waiting for. Goodbye, lands. Played around it. No good attacks for the opponent, which feels good. Huh. Okay. I, I will uh, very happily make this trade. Okay, they get our Heliod Pilgrim out of the yard. Two cards left for the opponent. Two very unexciting creatures. I think it's time to hero and revoke Timurit. And we can attack with Soul Reaper. Opponent cracks the amulet. I wonder if they're splashing. Doesn't, doesn't at least, at least not with a basic. Maybe their mana base is sketch like ours. Lagana Band Storyteller. Does that get back Aspect? Okay. Yeah, that'll get us. That'll hashtag get us. Not very much that I can do about that. Hmm. Feels like... I wish I had Omen in my hand still. Double Aspect is tough to deal with. I think I have to Apathy the Storyteller at this point. And attack for four. Really feels bad to lose out on both of these, but I don't, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. This 
feeling good about this not being a, a huge punt. I mean, it was obviously a punt, but not being a huge punt, but definitely, definitely feeling like it is now that they get two real cards. But we've got a storyteller of our own we can find. Sentinel's eyes ain't bad. Getting for seven is nice. We even have mana to scry or to exile and keep a blocker back on the life-linking pilgrim. Wonder what's left in our opponent's hand. Hydra's growth is the splash. All right. Resolves. Pass. Dig, dig, dig. Gotta find removal. It's not these. Bottom both of those. Okay. Attack with the hero. Play land. We'll block sack with the uh, hero this turn. Yikes. Wow, Gravebreaker Lamia, okay. Another large life-linking threat. Maybe I don't block Sack here. Since then, I'm still having to deal with this. We'll see what they go find. If it's something like Spawn, we're just wrecked. It's just land, okay. They're still live to Flicker of Fate here, and then we can double block Lamia. So I'm going to... Go to my turn. It's just a land. Yeah. Play it. Go ahead. Five, six. I think we can take one hit before we have to block sack. Banishing light on what? Soul Reaper? Hero. Okay. Yeah, hit, hitting a land pocket here, hard. Uh, I guess we're block sacking now because we've got the mana, so we might as well do it. There's favor, that's not gonna really get us there. Phew. <laughs> yeah, too late for Elspeth's Nightmare. All right, opponent, you got me. My punt and your splash hydra's growth were too much for me to handle. 4-1. All right, we're on the play. This is a keeper. It's a little tight, um, but we've got a two-drop. Got a couple shots of drawing our third land to open up Pilgrim to find something, so not mad. Oh, and we get Swamp right away. Feels good. So we'll, uh, we'll drop a hero here. If we see a land... In our next draw, I might Pilgrim for Presence. Oh, it's Eyes. That ain't bad. Let's uh, smash. And I'm going to play Pilgrim, because this lets us play Chimera next turn, even if we don't draw land. And I'll just make the responsible play of grabbing Apathy, I think. Removal is good. Altar, okay. It could be anything, even a boat. Let's start with pre-combat Chimera and an attack with Hero. Okay. Learned my lesson there with uh, not punting away. Like, you know, they flash in Will and then they kill Hero and then we can't cast Chimera. That feels bad. So let's do it, I think. Let's just, uh, now, hold on a second. We could, like, could eyes and then harpy? I don't hate that. Though, what does that do? It only, it means that Hero can attack this turn, which is pretty good. 
Let's do that. Let's eyes and harpy. They trade chimeras. That's fine, I think. I'm going to play a harpy. We still have the option of presence next turn. Or apathy, a large threat. Or rage scarred berserker. Like... We went land amulet. Seems like we're flooding pretty hard over there from the opponent. Um, I mean, I really don't like casting presence into open mana here. Just trying to think what it, what could white green have at instant speed that messes with this. Like if I put it on hero, what are you gonna do? What am I missing? Nothing. All right, 5-1, let's go. All right, here we go, game number seven, right? Four, five, one, that's that's the math there. Opponent's taking a mulligan, they go first, we're gonna keep, we get Timurid on turn two into, you know, some other goodies, maybe a commanding presence at some point. Um, but nice to have Timmy down early. If he sticks, Blight Breath Catablepus becomes like just straight up removal, which is nice. Oh, blue black. Haven't seen this yet. All right, Tinny. I'm getting some backup here. We can play Favored into Soul Reaper, which will trigger Favored, or Favored with Commanding Presence, which is one of my favorites. 4-4 four, four, double strike. Make two one ones if it connects. Put it on Omen of the Sea. That's their first play of the game. Two cards at the top. They like them both. Cards so nice, I topped them twice. El Speth's Nightmare. Holy cow, that card is going to destroy us. So we'll drop uh, Favored, and they're just going to get Commanding Presence next turn. Feels really bad. Talk about unmulliganing. Illyrios enraptured, okay. So we'll lead on, I guess, Soul Reaper so we get an attack in this turn. They are stuck on three lands. Like, they top-topped and didn't hit land number four yet. It's not nothing. All right, Elspeth's Nightmare. That was a beating. Let's see if we can overcome it. And there, There's land number four, but we know everything's action in their hand. Wow. All right. Um, I guess you just counter this. No. All right. So it's Gull or Thirst. No attacks. Okay. They know about BBC. BBC is Blight Breath. For those of you playing along at home. Metamize Prophecy, yeah, that's not great. Not backbreaking either. Scry two top again. Hey, Mikey, he likes it. Okay. Well, I'm going to start pushing damage here because that's what I got to do. So we're going to kill Illyrios and get him with Daybreak and Soul Reaper. Choosing a card name. Wow, 
Witness of Tomorrows, okay? So what are you casting this turn, though? Shoal Kraken. Release the Kraken. Okay. So only have an attack in the air. I think we're going to... Hmm. I'm going to play Hero. We're certainly sacrificing something this turn. And I'm going to play a land. Yep. Surprise, surprise. I think we sack Favored, actually, because... No, do we? No, we sack Hero. There's no world where we draw, like, Sentinel's Eyes or something, and we want to... We would just put it on Daybreak Chimera, so... think we're probably done this game unfortunately play it out obviously but it's hard to imagine a world where we're not in in a, a huge amount of trouble here all right we're gonna sack hero okay pilgrim is a start pilgrim is a real start here for us now we get to go find the other apathy or first apathy rather to take witness down for now we can't quite attack with favored but we can get in with chimera Again, I'm going to keep playing lands because of Soul Reaper. Like, we don't know what we're going to... If we, like... You know, if I don't play that land there and our next draw is land and we sack Pilgrim and we find Blight Breath and I'm one land short of being able to play it, that's going to feel really bad. One with the stars, our Chimera. We have Revoke for that. In this, in this situation, doop doop, sack pilgrim, draw a second apathy, and what that's going to let us do is go apathy on kraken, get the double strike trigger, and I think serve with everybody. Like they can, and the question is if they. Trade with Catabolipus, do I want to sack it to draw? Puts him to three. Nah, I think, I think we let it happen. Just thinking about our future Catabolipus having only one pip. Oh, we fought. We fought hard. We fought hard, and and uh, and we we gave it our best, but I don't think it was gonna be good enough. Now, I guess there is the the world where we draw a flicker. I'm just gonna do this in response. Draw a flicker or Sentinel's eyes, I guess, is a thing that that wins us the game right now. Planes is not gonna win us the game right now. I guess we attack with both. Block favored. We'll get Daxos. Sure. And there, one. Sure, Wave Rider. Soul Reaper. I have Lamp Pad too, right? Lamp Pad's a draw. Maybe I'm supposed to be digging for that. Take eight.
So what if we flicker? Can't win with I can't flicker one with the stars and attack with Chimera, right? I mean, we're not dead. The thing about this is, is that we're not dead. So we play a land. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing though. Like, so almost certainly I'm supposed to flicker this onto this. Though I guess I need to do it now because of Soul Reaper. They could just sack the Kraken in response to us exiling it, and then the apathy goes away before we can flicker it. And then do I have mana up to sack a creature? I do. To whatever they to sack whatever they steal. Okay, so let's do that. So go full control. Boop, boop, boop. Apathy. And then Flicker, Apathy. And then I can attach to the Hexproof creature. Because it ain't targeting. Uh, resolve. And turn. Sack whatever they go to steal. Bleepus. Okay. I've never done this in this format. I've never put apathy on a hexproof creature. Rage, scarred, berserker. Okay. I just need lamp pad. That's all I need. All right, opponent attacks for six and plays their own land pad. Holy crap. Oh boy, we are so dead. So I can, I can Blight Breath. I can attack with Soul Reaper. Oh, oof, I don't know what I can do. Blight Breath, land pad, and like block sack digging for stuff, I guess. So Blight Breath Lamp Pad while they're tapped out and then Block Sack digging for my own Lamp Pad. Play land. No attacks, go. This game is crazy. Sack that to draw, fine. I, I couldn't have spent mana to exile it at any point. I need it. Need to keep up my Soul Reaper draw. That's pretty much a gift. Pass, block. They're not attacking with anything else. Sack bleeps. Dig, dig, dig. Sentinel's Eyes, not quite what we're looking for. <laughs> Another Soul Reaper for the opponent, post-combat. Uh, this is it, right? We just have to find something here. We have to find Lampad, basically, because otherwise, I mean, I can block sack, but it's not going to do anything, so let's uh... YOLO. Oof. Much close, very wow. Couldn't quite, quite make it there, unfortunately. Fought valiantly. Thought we could beat uh, the Kiora there. Came close. Came close for sure. All right, we're on the ropes. Here we are for game number eight. We're five and two. We're going to go ahead and keep on the play. Not the most exciting hand we've seen, but it's fine. Potential for a turn to Timurit. 
I'll say it's awkward to feel like I want to draw lands, both lands and spells with this hand. Ha! <laughs> and immediately punished with the Daxos, but Daxos will be fine on, on three. Eidolon of Abstraction. Okay. Drop Daxos down. No blocks for you right now, buddy. The first Aroan Games. Nice. Flicker Fate's going to look real good here, so no blocks for us. What shall we do? I think we have to have to keep up Flicker here in case they put it. Well, no, we don't. Well, <laughs> it's interesting. We could play Favored. I can still double... No, I can't. If I play Favored, I can double spell next turn if I draw a land. But I can still double spell if that land is a swamp. I think I'm going to go ahead and just pass. I think flickering whatever they target with this chapter of Aroan Games is too important. I guess I don't need to do it now, so resolves. Do you have Blessing? Oh, they do. Wow. That's a blowout. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. Except cry. And believe me, I'll be crying. So, I can double spell here. They're going to draw two cards either way. So I think I'm just going to go Timurit Favored. And attack with Daxos. And cry if it's Omen of the Sun. More crying would be happening. Favored of Iroas. 5-4 First Striker coming on in. Just about the best first row in games can be. Getting all value from all the chapters. All right. Let's see if we can bleeps this sidle on. And uh, attack with Timmy, I guess. If they had Indomitable Will or something, they would have played it to save the Eidolon. So can pretty safely attack with our Timurat there. Siona, Captain of the Pylias, and we see blue, so that means Staggering Insight. Sentinel's eyes are watching you. They didn't reveal anything, though, unless it was eyes and I just missed it. We could take six here. I think we probably would be better off just chumping with the bleeps. It does make Timurit less of a threat, but does gain us a life along the way. And now we get to Apathy Favored, which gives our own favored double strike. Now, obviously, they have just chumps all day. I think I'll save this other one. Def this blue definitely makes me feel like Staggering Insight is in their wheelhouse with what we're seeing. So I'm just going to hold on to this for as long as I can. I also don't want to exile Favored here because it puts Sentinel's Eyes in their yard. So I'm going to hang on to that for sure. Adds, adds a pip to Daxos as well. Here's a Grove Dancer. That's not really that much of a bummer. And we'll Timmy on our opponent's end step. Exile a couple cards. Get a life. Get a life. All right, land ain't great. Still don't think there's something I want to apathy. I don't have any attacks right now, so... We'll just sit tight. And exile again. Oh, I guess I could exile it with... Oh, I'm silly. Let's do that. Let's, uh... Let's get rid of this. And then get rid of eyes. I know it brings Daxos down a pip, but... 
getting it in our yard for um, Lagana Band Storyteller is pretty important, so let's do that. Silly, silly Ethan, I got there. Revoke existence. No, nope, nothing yet. I'm good. I'm just going to sit tight. They're not cracking amulet, which I'm finding interesting as well. Oh, no, that's that amulet. That's a gold token. Never mind. Not that interesting. Ooh. Yeah. Well, this is a little spewy. That's a little spewy. I could attack. Let's do that. Mm, yeah. Now, this opens us up to them attacking, I suppose. Hmm. No. All right, I'm feeling weird about this. No attacks. Let's just keep going. I'm laying into the Lost Pride shirt. Swamp. Go ahead. I'll probably make this trade like the Daxos trade here and then just follow it up with another Daxos. Feel good about not spewing this earlier as I was attempting to do. Follow for the opponent is Nessian Wanderer. Now, that can really accrue some value for them as the game progresses. They've drawn a lot of lands, though. Like, it doesn't matter. There's a card. Yeah, that's a card I want. So let's, uh, let's Daxos first up. Now, can we... What happens if we attack with favored here? They can line these three up and kill it. I might just chump. And if they don't, I just kill these two. That's not like the worst thing in the world. All right, let's just attack with this. I think they're just going to chump. Oh, they don't even chump. Just take four. Call me in the morning. Okay. <sighs> Level the playing field here on life totals. Oh, yes. Resolves. Happy that we sat on this apathy. Uh, happy that we sat on the apathy. What is he doing? Resolve. Yes. Yes, yes. Good, good. Okay, Apathy the Wanderer. Attack with Favored. Again, I basically get to trade for three things or a chump. Either is fine. Next. And if they cast something, <clears throat> I will uh, I will activate Apathy. I cast something, meaning cast a, a Constellation trigger. Don't need them digging up another land. Yeah, okay. Wow. Well, Exile, I guess we take a hit here and let them make a 1-1, one, one, and then we get to revoke the Grove Dancer. So that's something. Yep, go to 7. You get another 1-1. One, one. Feels bad. Pass the damage. See if they got something else. Nope. Okay. Exile. Boop boop. Gain a life. Oh, we are, we're flooding pretty hard here. Get to revoke Skull of Grove Dancer. Get 
Get to eyes. I think eyes on favored. And attack with it. Just gonna get another chump. It's five, that's 10 of our lands. Doesn't look like, whoa, what is this? Nice try, buddy. Keep exiling their yard. Nice, that's a good draw. So Berserker, pump up the volume on maybe Timurit. I'm gonna attack with, kind of wanna attack with both here, honestly. Hey, we got there! Woo! Fought through the first Saroan games, fought through Hydra's growth, fought through commanding presence, and now six and two for all the marbles. Let's do it. All right, here we are for the ninth and final game. We're six and two. This will be a keep for us. Not the most exciting hand again, but we got a two drop, a three drop, recursion. A little bit of weird interaction, so we'll go for it. Lead on planes just in case of a, uh, a Daxos off the top. Another green opponent. All righty. Uh, swamp land pad. Elysian Caryatid. You got it. All right, now we'll attack. And the question is Harpy versus Pilgrim. And I think just getting the flying beats going is gonna be better. Pilgrim's enticing because if we draw a land, we can uh, play Chimera. Ooh, baby. Now, what I'd really like to do is cast Pilgrim to go find Apathy, but we got a Nightmare here, get rid of carry added. Nightmare earlier, or early and often. We even have Flicker for it if it's relevant. We'll see what's going on upstairs with our opponent. This keeps him off being able to play a six drop this turn, which is pretty big. Nessian Horn Beetle, holy cow. Well, we, wait, that's something we could, like we could reset, no, nope. Nope, it's going to be too late to reset anything here. God. Not looking good for the home team already. Stuck on three lands, facing down so much beef. Not even sure Lampad can offset this, but we'll see. Wow. Yup. Goodbye, friend. What's going on up there? Hydra. So many Hydra's growths. Good God. Uh, okay. So we just have to Daxos here and what? No, maybe I don't. Maybe what I have to do is Pilgrim. Probably have to Pilgrim for Apathy at this point. And hope that we can like draw land land for the Apathy flicker shenanigans. Okay. We got a plan. We got a plan. I think we take it here. I think we take it. No blocks. So that I can hope to block sack next turn. Yeah, okay, so there's part one of the puzzle. And we're gonna actually put the apathy on, well, actually it doesn't matter. We'll put apathy on horn beetle here. That's more damage. Apathy on Horn Beetle. No attacks. Because then I get rid of that first block sack on Typhon. Then we have a block here. They can make a they can make a 2-2 land if they want. Looks like they don't. Block. Sack.
and nothing. Oof, so close. So very close. So probably just Omen Pilgrim find our second apathy here. And then blot and then just chump with Pilgrim again. Okay. No attacks. Go ahead. One of the hunt, the last card. Now our opponent can make three threes. Okay. And they're splashing black. Here's a scry. Now they only make two twos. Two top. That can't be good for the home team. Block. Jeez. Top, top, huh? I don't think I have a choice here. All right, we're all in denial. That resolves. <sighs> and we're just going to take four here, I think. Wow, yeah. Ah, just can't get there on the lands. That's such a shame. That's probably gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there. Missing on land number five for so long really hurts. But I'm happy to get my money back and it feels pretty good to uh to get the six wins with our rareless deck. Felt like it played out pretty well when it didn't stumble. I guess you could say that about a lot of decks. Well, thanks for sticking with me for this whole video. I know some of those games were, uh, were pretty dang interesting. We almost bested the Sea God itself. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Really appreciate the love that we're getting for the YouTube channel, and we'll catch you next time for our next video. Bye-bye.